Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from a sort of interesting life.com. We have got a sofa full of bags of clothes and water and a sleeping bag, a Kelly kettle and goodness knows what else. That can mean only one thing. We're going camping. I was picked up from the side of the canal. I live on a little boat for anybody unfamiliar with my videos. And off we went to Yorkshire to do the three peaks, not in any particular rush. Who is this we that I speak of? Why, it's Stig Nest and it's Matthew Luxton. Wow, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, the fun began. The first hill that we headed up was Ingleborough. And even though it wasn't the sort of perfect, amazing, blazing sunshine and blue skies that we have had recently, it doesn't really take away from the experience of the walk when you're heading up a lot of the distance through all of this sort of rolling countryside and these rather low hills about... And when it comes to finding completely random features dotted about like this, it really does just say there's not much that the weather can or can't take away. When we got up to the top of the hill, as you'll see in a moment, it was extremely cloudy. And this was Gaping Gill. Yet again, another random feature just dropped into the middle of nowhere. This is Britain's largest unbroken waterfall. And the shaft here is basically a 100 metre drop. As you can see, it's pretty formidable. Not the sort of area that I would particularly want to practice riding a unicycle, for example. <laughs> As we got further up the hill, moving on from that ridiculous line, you can see the sort of countryside scenery that we had and how what I quite like about this sort of weather condition is, I don't know if it shows up on the video here, but when you get into this really, really thick cloud, and it is literally the cloud that you're walking through, and you're on top of one of these sort of rolling flat hilltops, you can see only a few feet away from you the actual misty cloud going past and where it's thicker and thinner and there's the trig point of the top of the hill there. The next thing that we had on our agenda was to find somewhere to camp. We were wondering whether we were going to go up a second mountain that day but thought, nah, let's try and find ourselves a nice place to pitch a tent. We had a look at the side of the road, but luckily stumbled across this rather nice field that was in fact used as a camping site. And this was right on the edge of this rather interesting feature. Little stream running through here, but you can imagine over the winter how this fills up. And this fascinating rock formation of all these little hills and almost like a miniature hilly landscape that you've got. Almost like the sort of thing you'd expect in the first emperor of China's palace with mercury running through it. Something like that. Obscure reference, I know. This was us trying to light the Kelly kettle with the old flint and steel. We did get it lit, but there may have been a fire lighter used. So that may be considered cheating by some. But it does the job, gets the water boiled, lovely stuff. This was us in a very cramped tent. Well, I say very cramped, not too cramped at all, really, considering there were three of us in there. Definitely enough room, and we all had a decent amount of sleep, so I can't complain, and I've I have give it a bad press by saying it was cramped. Anyway, saw the lovely fires up there as we headed up the first hill the next morning. This was Wernside, as illustrated by the sign. And this again, we had the unfortunate cloud-covered top. But again, it's all part of the experience. We've certainly done plenty of walking up hills and had the amazing views. This was looking directly downwards. That is literally how steep the hillside was there. So that's just another one where you don't want to be practicing your unicycle riding. Very interesting style there to stop the sheep getting through. And the trig point on top of Wernside. Looking very weathered indeed. So, our plan for the rest of the day was basically get ourselves down this. We did end up walking underneath the viaduct and then we headed on to the third of the three peaks. We'd also done a little, I'm not sure if it was Simon Fell, something like that, but another little hilltop uh, the day before. But this, this was my favourite. This here is Penny Ghent. I'll put the name on the screen to negate my terrible pronunciation. And as you can see there from the way that the cloud was rolling across the top, it's another one of those beautiful, dramatic things. Reminded me very much of Stack Polly in Scotland. And these are, I don't know, these are the sort of mountains and hills that I like, where you have your standard sort of nice slow walk up a gradual gradient. But then suddenly it goes all really rocky and you start to really get very, very steep sides 
where it's not so steep that you end up climbing, but it's steep enough that the stairways and the little paths that have been carved out over the years are almost more like ladders than anything else. And you can see we've got this nice little stone trig point on the top, which personally I would say at this point, this was the high point of this walk, most literally in terms of the height. But I'm going to cut to some random footage of general scenery in a Kelly kettle now, because as we headed down towards Plover Hill, just to add another little hilltop to our walk, it started to absolutely hammer down, and we ended up walking down the side of the mountain off the path through knee-deep heather and general marshy boggy land in absolutely hammering rain that you couldn't open your eyes and look into. And my goodness me, by the time we got down to the bottom, we were soaked through. Fantastic in many ways because it was the absolute end of the trip so we could get in the car and get the heaters on and head back to good old Shropshire. But my goodness me, have I been that wet for, well, I don't know how long it has been. Probably a good five years or so coming down Ben Nevis. I'll say thank you very much for watching. Check out my other videos for loads more walking and hills and outdoorsy stuff, camping and kayaking. Also, check out my other videos for general life on a narrowboat. Feel free to like the Facebook page, subscribe, all those great things. And check out my books for the Kindle, The Narrowboat Lad and A Narrowboat and a Notebook. And until the next time, keep it hill-worthy and have a fantastic day. Farewell.